You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, the official home for student play-by-play at the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. Now let's take you live courtside at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. It's Florida Gators men's basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. The clocks have fallen back. The temperatures are falling down and the rowdy reptiles are out in full force. That can only mean one thing. Gator basketball is back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hugh Green alongside Ethan Ive. We are live from the Exact Tech Arena at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. You are listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. And we are ready for the Gators season opener against Loyola University Maryland Greyhounds here on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. And Ethan, how great does it feel to be back in the O-Dome? It is an awesome feeling. It's great to see the band out in full force. And of course, the Rowdy Reptiles as well, waving the banners around, the pom-poms around. This is one of the best sights you can see here in Gainesville. That is for sure. And one of the best sights in college basketball to visit. So tonight, we have the Florida Gators who went 16 and 17 in their previous campaign under now second year head coach Todd Golden. And the Gators, they're gonna be looking a lot different this year, Ethan. Yeah, definitely a lot of new guys around here for Florida who finished 16 and 17 a year ago, nine and nine in conference play. Lost in the first round of the National Invitational Tournament for the second straight year to UCF. Lost in the SEC Tournament's first round as well. Nine new guys around on this roster, only six returners. Uh, those guys that departed, mainly Colin Castleton, Alex Fudge, a couple of new Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, but it'll be a, a couple of new guys that we should take a look at here, including um, Micah Handlogden, who will get the start today for Florida. Yeah, Handlogden, a 7-1 center, 235 pounds. He's a sophomore transfer from Marshall. Uh, last, last year, he averaged seven and a half points a game and just under 10 rebounds. He also averaged 2.3 blocks per game. So he's gonna need to fill the shoes of the Colin Castleton of last year, who was a big force on the inside. Another guy to look at, another big transfer, will be Walter Clayton Jr., uh, who was the Metro Atlantic Conference Player of the Year last year. Also unanimous first team, all MAAC. And those additions address a couple of key areas the Gators are looking to get better at heading into this season. Rebounding was among the top one of those categories. They were one of the worst in the country last year. 320th out of 363 Division I teams and last in the SEC. Han Logden is 7-1. Cyrus Samuel 6-11. Han Logden's the first seven-foot player in this program since the 1990s when Dwayne uh, Schneidis was here. Also, outside shooting was an area that Florida was looking to get better at. Third worst three-point percentage in program history a year ago, and Clayton Jr. is really going to help out with that. He was 43% from beyond the arc just last year with Iona. Yeah, and for the Gators' opponent tonight will be Loyola, Maryland, the Greyhounds, who went 13-20 and 20 last year. They are coached by sixth-year head coach Tavares Hardy, who has a career record of 59 and 85 in his career, all six years now at Loyola, Maryland. Uh, who are some of the key guys you're looking forward to seeing tonight for Loyola? Well, Loyola last year, a 13 and 20 record, seven and 11 in the Patriot League. They were headed up by Kenneth Jones. He run, he ran the offense. He's no longer with the program. So a couple of guys to look out for, Golden DK and Dion Perry to lead the offense. DK in his fifth year with Loyola, native of Spain, not really a high usage guy, averages about seven points per game, but he's one of the more veteran players that Loyola has at their disposal. Perry, just a sophomore, exploded onto the scene with, with some exceptional performances last year, especially in the second half. Loyola, of course, a Baltimore school, and Perry, a Baltimore native, averaged 17.5 points per game for the Greyhounds in their final 12 games. That is, yep, and we will take a quick break here on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. We'll be right back with the starting lineups and tip-off in just a couple minutes on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. 
Hey, Russell Wilson here, and I know how important exercise is. It's essential. It's essential. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids stay active and play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids. Healthy kids. But what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Because great things happen when we live united. Donate, donate. Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. There are some things you can only do once in a lifetime. Graduate high school, get your first job, and if you're a young man about to turn 18, there's one other thing, which is also the law. Registering with Selective Service. It's fast, it's easy, and you only have to do it once your entire life. Just visit your post office or sss.gov on your computer or smartphone. Do it and keep yourself eligible for a lot of other once-in-a-lifetime experiences, like that first college loan or Pell Grant, or U.S. citizenship if you're an immigrant. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique, among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key you can be part of the solution please contact save the manatee club right now call 1-800-432-JOIN thank you are you saving for a big purchase or just trying to put money away for a rainy day the national foundation for credit counseling offers these tips to help you meet your savings goals set aside money from every paycheck bank any raises bonuses or tax refunds and put away loose change every night it adds up for more tips on how to save money and reach your financial goals, call a certified NFCC counselor at 1-800-388-2227 or visit nfcc.org, a public service from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Welcome back to the Orange and or Blue Sports Network. We are live from the Exact Tech Arena at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. I'm Hugh Green alongside Ethan Ibe, and we are ready for some Gator basketball as they go up against Loyola, Maryland. So I will give the starting lineups now. First for Loyola, at, at guard number zero, D'Angelo Steins. At guard number 12, Dion Perry. Another guard, number 15, Tyson Commander. And the two forwards, number four, Alonzo Faure. And number 11, Milos Illich. And for the Florida Gators, there are two returners in the starting lineup. Three new guys. At guard number one, Walter Clayton Jr. Another guard, number two, Riley Kugel. Guard, number five, Will Richard. At forward, number four, Tyree Samuel. And at center, number three, Micah Hanlockton. Now, a couple of those guys we just have to spotlight. Riley Kugel and Will Richard. They are going to be running the show here in Gainesville in Todd Golden's second year. Kugel really impressed last year in his first year in Gainesville, a preseason All-SEC guard. He was the first UF freshman since Bradley Beal to hit double digits in 10 consecutive games. And Richard, one of the most offensively efficient players in the country, he shot 49.3% overall. Almost nearly 40% from deep and 85% at the free throw line. And as we get ready for tip here, Ethan, what are some of the things we saw? we know that Todd Golden in his second year at UF coming from uh, University of San Francisco, what are some of the things he brought in a lot of guys uh, what are you looking forward to from these new guys or just from Todd Golden this upcoming season? I think this is just going to be a year for this fresh blood. You have some new guys coming in, a new chance to put a different different take on this culture that Florida is trying to build. you got to get better at the rebounding side of the game. Hit those three balls. I remember even some games when I was here as a fan, the frustrating times when they just couldn't, they just couldn't seem to make a shot from deep. Got to be able to connect on those. And as I'm looking at these Gators, uh, doing their handshakes by the bench. I almost forgot they got some uh, new uniforms this year as well. Yes, the all-white home uniforms as they are traditional, but this year they kind of switched it up a little bit. They have the block letter Florida across the chest with the blue letters and blue numbers, but the names in orange at the top and the back of the uniforms uh, with the orange and blue piping down the sides. Uh, University or the Loyola Maryland will be in their all green away uniforms the forest green tops and bottoms with white letters and numbers we are just getting ready to tip off here from Billy Donovan court at the exact tech arena it's going to be an exciting matchup today an exciting season in Todd Golden's second year at the helm at the University of Florida 
with the tip off here for Florida will be Micah Handlockton and for Loyola will be Alonzo Faure. The Rowdy Reptiles are out in full force tonight. They are getting loud. And I I assume this, this place will get a little more packed as we get a little bit further into the game tonight. Oh, I just know that student section is already popping and there's some guys who maybe wanted to sit there that aren't gonna have any spots tonight because this place is absolutely packed here, Hugh. Yeah, they've been waiting a long time to, for Gator basketball to get back and it is finally here. This is gonna be the first matchup between these two schools in history. Uh, they've never met in regular season, postseason at all. So it, it'll be new faces for both these squads on the defensive end going up against each other. The officials are conversing and getting ready to throw the ball up here. It'll be Handlockton and Fowry in the middle to jump it up. And the Gator season is underway as Walter Clayton has it for Florida. Samuel now at the top of the key. Has it on the left side, gives it up to Clayton. Stop, jump stop to the right key, to the right, to Richard. Now on the other side to Samuel. Backing down his defender with a right jump hook. It's off the front of the rim, no good. Brought in by Faure for Loyola coming the other way. Now on the right side is Steins. Up top to Faure. They're passing around the perimeter. Perry with it at the top. Gives it up to Steins. Left hand dribble inside. Faure with it now against Handlockton. Top of the key to Commander. To the right wing. Driving inside, baseline, stolen away by Clayton. Coming the other way for Florida. Up to Kugel. Euro step, right handed layup is good. And the first points for Florida as they lead it two to nothing with a minute gone in the first half here. So Loyola back with it now. At the top of the key, driving inside with the left hand is Steins, no good off the backboard. Samuel comes, with, comes up with it for Florida coming the other way. Now it's with Clayton. Back into Samuel, to the right corner for Kugel. Pump fakes, gives it up to Richard at the top. Drive it inside with the right hand, passes it inside. Hand locks it, couldn't control it. Coming the other way now is Perry for Loyola. At the top of the key with Illich inside goes Steins, left-handed layup, no good. A lot of misses so far as Richard comes the other way, pulls up for three at the top of the key, off the right rim, and up with it for Loyola is Perry. A lot of misses so far in the early going, these first two minutes from both sides. Gators lead it two to nothing. Samuel with it at the top of the key for Loyola. Gets it over to Perry, double teamed on the right wing. Back to the left side, it tries to go inside to Faure, but stolen away by Handlockton, and Kugel has it for Florida, coming down. Handlockton with it, out to Richard on the right wing. Out to Clayton, inside to Samuel, left-handed dribble, and layup is good. Four nothing lead for Florida, with just over 17 and a half to play in this first half now. Loyola with it. Faure at the top of the key. Gives it up to Illich. Now it's with Perry. Dribbling around the outside, a screen from Samuel. Inside goes Perry with a right-handed floater, no good. Brought in by Samuel, coming the other way for Florida. Clayton coming down, tries to get it inside to Handlockton and a foul is called. That'll go against Dion Perry on Loyola. The first foul for either side in this game. Well, so far, Florida's doing a really great job of moving this ball around, finding opportunities, and Logden has just been incredible. Getting in there, that big seven-foot body in the paint, and uh, messing up those potential shots for Loyola. And Han Logden comes off now. Alex Condon, the freshman, gets his first minutes as a Gator. Florida has it now. Kugel has it at the logo. Gets a screen from Samuel. Right-handed dribble at the key. Pass it inside to Samuel, lays it up and in. And he has four points as the Gators lead it six to nothing. And Loyola has it back, down by six. Perry from the left wing, pump fakes, has Clayton on him. Gives it up to Illich, who missed all of last season with an injury. To the left wing now, Commander, driving at baseline with his left hand. 
Defended well by Richard, and he, the pass is thrown away. Kugel takes it for Florida. Outside to Condon. Clayton for three from the right wing. Book it! Walter Clayton Jr. with his first three points as a Florida Gator, and the Gators lead it nine to nothing with three and a half minutes played in this first half. Unreal start for these Florida Gators. A nine nothing advantage already. This Loyola team, its defense in particular was a real weakness for them last year. One of the worst in the nation, honestly, surrendered a sky high 55 and a half points uh, on defense, which ranked 355th nationally. That means only nine teams in the country were worse, if you can believe that. Yeah, the, the defense has, ha has looked a little bit shaky so far tonight, so that, that's something uh, Coach Hardy and this Greyhounds team is going to want to look into, and their offense as well has not been up to par so far. In particular, the, tra the transition defense has been an issue uh, for Loyola. Meanwhile, the Gators on transition have just been incredible. We've seen a couple of times already with Han Logden getting in the middle, putting a log jam, if you want to call it that, uh, in the Loyola offense, and then just getting that ball back up the court as quickly as possible to guys like Kugel and Richard, who are facilitating terrific already. Yeah, that is something, that is, that's a staple of the Todd Golden offense. He loves to run, he loves to get out in transition, doesn't like to be in the half court and play out of his, uh, play a half court offense uh, very often. As we said, nine to nothing, the Gators lead it. Just over three and a half minutes played in this first half. Walter Clayton Jr. with a big three right there from the right wing, his first points as a Gator. Clayton said his favorite NBA player, guess what, Bradley Beal. So he's a, he's been a fan of the Gators. He must have been. No wonder that. He is a Florida native from Lake Wales. Yeah, and Clayton was, the, he, he finished first in the nation in free throw percentage last year. He shot 102 of 107 from the free throw line. That's unreal. That's a 95% clip, and yeah, that, that had, that led him to be number one in the nation in that field. So this crowd getting into it now as the Gators lead it nine to nothing. The Loyola team still over on their bench trying to figure out what to do to, uh, to score some points on this Gator defense, which has been just swarming uh, on the inside and the outside. They have a couple steals already, uh, a few turnovers uh, on this uh, Loyola team so far. So it'll be interesting to see if they have some type of changes to be made against this Gator defense. So it looks like Chris Kuzemska, Kuzemka will come into the game for the first time with for Loyola as they have the ball moving left to right. They get it up to the top to Faure. Over to Milos Illich. Out to Kuzemka. Back into Faure. Defended by Condon. Good job by Condon to tip it away. Stolen away by Kugel. Up to Richard. Right-handed dunk is good. 11 to nothing, the Gators lead it. Four minutes played in this first half. Defense to offense again for Florida. Loyola back with it now. Faure has it, and a whistle is blown, a foul is called. That will go on the inside against Will Richard. Uh, he was called for a foul in the paint. Again, getting those points in transition. That is going to be huge throughout this entire game. It's the reason why the Gators are up 11 to nothing right now. Yeah, just over four minutes played so far. Loyola with it now. Perry dribbling on the inside, defended by Clayton. He gives it up to Illich at the top. Commander with it. And a whistle is blown and a blocking foul called on Loyola. That was against Alonzo Faure. It looks like he set an illegal screen there. He'll come out of the game. And Golden DK we will see for the first time tonight. We talked about him earlier in the game. One of the key players to look forward to seeing tonight for Loyola. So Samuel with it has it at, at the top of the key for Florida. Now gives it up to Kugel on the left wing. Step back, putting the moves on the defender inside to Condon. Trying to find a way out. Gives it up to Richard, who, who dribbles it off his foot, and Perry has it coming down the floor for Loyola. Gets it into the corner for Commander. Back out to Perry. Illich with it now, at the top of the key, defended by Richard. 
Out to Commander from the left wing for three. That one's no good. And Clayton comes up with it for Florida coming the other way. Outlet pass to Samuel on the inside. And 13-0. The Gators lead it as Samuel lays it in. He has six points to lead all scorers tonight. What a pass by Clayton there. That was fantastic. Now Kuzemka comes inside for Loyola. Out to the corner for Perry. On the left side. Tries to throw it off of the Gator defender, but looks like Walter Clayton will be called for a foul and a shove in the left corner on Perry. Couple of substitutions now as Denzel Aberdeen and Thomas Houck come in, come in for the first time tonight for Florida and David Brown the third will come in for Loyola. Loyola with it now at the logo. On the right wing, gives it up to DK at the top. Now with Brown. Perry with it, defended by Clayton. Perry pulls up for three off the backboard, didn't hit the rim and Aberdeen comes back with it for Florida. Gives it up to Condon. A lot of ball movement here as Kugel step back three. Off the right rim, no good. Offensive rebound, it tipped out to Aberdeen. For Condon for the right wing three, that's good. 16 to zero, the Gators lead it. Just, so, just about six minutes played so far in this first half. Loyola has no answer. Perry with it for the Greyhounds. Now with Kuzemka, out to Commander, inside to DK, back and down Condon, spins around to Commander for the 15 footer, that's in, and Loyola finally has their first points of the game. It's a 16 to two lead for Florida. Well, they took him six minutes. <laughs> Clayton now with it for the Gators. Kugel has it on the left side. A fake screen by Hauk, a three from Condon on the top of the key, that's good. Condon back to back threes. The freshman showing off his range so far, 19 to two. The Gators lead it with just about seven minutes played tonight. DK has it for Loyola now. Commander has it, top of the key. Gives it up to Perry. Looks like he wants to shoot it. He won't, he dribble it down baseline. Comes inside, passes it out. Kuzemka for three from the left wing is good. They have five points now, 19 to five, Gators lead. Kugel now back with it for Florida as they come quickly inside, tosses it up, but he was fouled on the inside by David Brown the third. That'll be his first foul, and Kugel will go to the line to shoot two. Well, Alex Condon has certainly found his stride early on here, the 6'11 freshman. Man, with him and with Han Logden, it looks like the Gators are gonna be looking good in that center position. Yeah, for sure. And if if Condon can shoot like that all year, that'll really stretch out the defense, allow a lot of space on the inside for what we just saw with Kugel driving it inside, drawing the foul. Condon, one of the few foreign players on this Gators team, graduated from the NBA Global Academy in Australia. Kugel makes his first free throw. That extends the lead to 20 to five for Florida. Steins comes back into the game for Commander for Loyola. Google was a 66% free throw shooter last year. He's gonna wanna improve on that uh, this season. His second free throw as he shoot it was waved off. And a lane violation called by Condon. So no shot and the Gators still lead it 20 to five with Loyola coming back the other way, just under 13 minutes to play in the first half. On the inside of DK. The pass is tipped out by Kugel, coming the other way. Tries to go inside and slam it home, but he was fouled on the way up by D'Angelo Steins of Loyola. And Kugel will go back to the line to shoot two once more. I think we've seen about five instances of Loyola just mishandling the ball, errant passes, allowing the Gators just to get in the middle, intercept them and create that transition offense. Yeah, for sure. This uh, Gator defense has just been all over the offense of Loyola so far tonight. So Kugel will shoot his second free throw as his second one last time was waved off due to a lane violation by Condon. His first one this time is good. Looks like Julian Rishwain is set to come into this game. Uh, Rishwain for the first time in his career or first time in his Florida career, rather. He's a graduate transfer from San Francisco, played a couple years under Todd Golden there uh, in California. 
He was an outstanding three-point shooter for 40% from beyond the arc, and he's, some, he's someone who we're going to be interested in watching as we go along tonight. Kugel makes his second free throw. It's a 22-5 lead now for Florida. Loyola with it. Steins has it on the right wing. Gives it up to Perry. Left-handed dribble. Now with DK at the top of the key. Kuzemka with it. Out to Steins. Pulls up for three. Defended well and blocked by Kugel on the right side. He's coming the other way. Has it on the right wing. Pulls up for three. Off the front iron. And Perry back with it for Loyola. It's a screen from DK. Passes it outside to Brown from the right wing for three. Off the back rim. No good, but Steins with the hustle play right there. An offensive rebound. And Loyola keeps it. Perry now with it, defended by Aberdeen. Switches off to hand locks and drive it inside. Outside to Brown, once again for three from the corner this time. Gets the shooter's bounce, and it's good. 22 to eight, Florida leads now. Aberdeen coming back with it for Florida. Kugel now on the right wing. Inside to hand Lockton. To the left wing for Rishwain. Pulls up for three, and it's good. Ethan, you just talked about it at this sharp shooting. Graduate Julian Rishwain for three, and the Gators lead it 25 to eight. And Rishwain 6-5, he's showing it off right now. Loyola has it now with DK. Inside to Brown, goes up for it, and is fouled on the shot. That one will go against Thomas Houck. And, and one final note on Rishwain, you know, his role was a little bit up in the air heading into this season in January. He was still rehabbing after undergoing some reconstructive knee surgery. So it'll be good to see uh, him get some action today. And uh, I think we're going to see pretty much everybody from that Florida roster get into the game at some point tonight, if you can just tell from this score here. <laughs> yeah, 25 to 8 lead for Florida. 11.09 to play in this first half. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back here on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Welcome back to Science Today. And we already have our next caller. Hi, I'm Philip. Hello, Philip. You sound really young. <laughs> Not really. I'm nine. Oh, wow. You're still in elementary school, right? Does that matter? Oh, no. Not at all. What's your question? Well, I know the molecular formula for water is H2O. I also know that hydrocarbon is CH3, CH2, 50, CH3. Glucose is C6H12O6. The general formula for an alkene is CnH2n plus 2. But what I can't seem to find is any scientific formula for Bob. Bob? My goldfish. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, go to mypyramid.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco. And the Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. We are live at the Exact Tech Arena at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. Mm -hmm. The Gators lead the Loyola Greyhounds 25 to 8 so far with 11.09 to play in this first half. What a start for Florida, Ethan. It's been unreal. I mean, we kind of expected this with uh, Loyola, of course, being a, a lesser opponent. Florida hasn't lost a home opener in 40 years, and that's largely because they schedule these cupcake games ahead of time. But <laughs> you know what? It's still great to see the Skaters, uh, the skaters season get off to a hot start. Yeah, the Gators are shooting 69% so far tonight in the first just about nine minutes. They're 9 of 13 from the floor on the other side. Loyola shooting just 3 of 10 for a 30% from the field. So David Brown, the third, shooting two free throws. He makes his first, and it's a 26 to 9 lead now for Florida. Brown set to shoot his second with the righty reptiles getting into it. The second one is up and good, and it's a 26 to 10, 25 to 10 lead for Florida. Aberdeen with it coming right to left for the Gators. Has it back at the logo, driving inside. Now steps back. It's all Aberdeen here, drives it inside with the right hand, off the backboard and in. 
One-man possession there by Denzel Aberdeen for his first points of the game. Gators lead it 27 to 10. Loyola back with it now. Perry has it at the logo, defended by Aberdeen. Gives it up to Steins. Perry from the left wing, long three off the front iron, no good. And a rebound, but a foul called on Micah Handlogton on the inside. Looked like he pushed a Golden Dyke there, and he was called for the foul. Well, Aberdeen has been a real force in this game so far. We're still only pretty early in this first half. So Loyola's inbounded from the baseline. Steins now has it up with Kuzem Kuzemka at the logo. Gives it into DK, defended by Handlogton, and he'll be called for a second foul in a row, Will Micah Handlogton. And Re but, uh, reaching inside there against DK, uh, got, got his arm caught and uh, called for the foul. I was going to say, another thing on Aberdeen, he's really clear-cut, one of the most um, improved players from last year, his freshman year, only played in 12 games. His, uh, his teammates have been really hyping him up ahead of this season. Definitely, and Handlockton will sit down. Condon comes back in for Florida. Perry now with it for Loyola at the top of the key. Nice pass inside. Kuzem Kuzemka, left-handed lay layup is in. 27 to 12, the Gators lead it now. Coming back the other way. Richard has it inside to Condon. Spins around, out to Aberdeen on the right wing. 15 foot jumper, no good. Spins around, but offensive rebound by Condon. And it's a fight for a ball on the inside and a jump ball will be called here. The possession arrow is pointing towards Loyola as they will have the ball back. Give Loyola some credit, they're hanging in there here after a 16 to 0 start to this one for Florida. Yeah, the, uh, the Greyhounds trying to storm back here. A nice hustle play there. Uh, didn't allow the offensive rebound for Condon, and they get the ball back now. Kuzemka with it at the top of the key for, for the Greyhounds. Out to Steins. Now with Faure. At the top of the key, three for Brown. No good. Aberdeen with it for Florida coming the other way. Left-handed dribble. Crosses over. Outside. For three is Rich Wayne, no good. The rebound is collected by Perry, long pass. Now on the left side for Kuzemka for three, that one's good. Kuzemka was all alone that time around on that cross court pass. 27 to 15, the Gators lead now. Kuzemka with eight points on two threes. Richard now has it for Florida. Just about nine minutes to play here in the first half. Samuel has it at the top of the key. Left-handed dribble inside. Goes up for the layup. No good, but was fouled by Faure. And Samuel will go to the line to shoot two. Good job by Samuel there. Splitting the double team. Going to his left hand, left hand for the dribble and then tries to float it in. Uh, drives it in hard and gets fouled. We'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Samuel, one of the new guys on the block out of Seton Hall, graduate transfer. His first free throw is no good off the left side. Samuel, a 65% free throw shooter last year, 60% for his career. So that's something he's going to want to work on uh, this, this time around. It's a team that shot 72% from the free throw line last year as a whole. A couple of subs in now for the Gators as Samuel misses his second free throw. So he misses both, still a 27 to 15 lead for Florida. Brown with it on the right wing for Loyola. Now with Kuzemka. Perry, right-handed dribble defended by Clayton. Outside to Brown, in the right corner to Commander. Inside to Faure, defended by Condon. Left-handed jump hook, no good from Faure. Samuel with the rebound. Gators coming back with it. Clayton has it, left-handed dribble. Tries to go lob to Samuel, but the jam is no good. A foul will be called against Faure, I believe, for Loyola. That would have been exciting. Either. Yeah, that would have been a thunderous dunk there from Samuel had he been able to get a better angle on it, just a bit out to the right side. Yeah, wasn't able to get his, wasn't able to palm the ball there. So Samuel will go to the line to shoot two again. He missed his first two free throws earlier, misses that one as well. So he's 0 for 3 from the line tonight. The Gators are, are now 4 for 8 from the free throw line. Those are points that you do not want to miss. They're called free throws for a reason. 
Samuel able to make his second one. And it's now a 28 to 15 lead for Florida. Just, a, just about eight and a half to play in this first half. DK with it now for Loyola. Out to Perry. Has it at the logo, driving inside. Tipped away by Clayton. Richard comes back with it for Florida. Left side to Kugel, back inside to Richard. And he was fouled on his way up. Ball was poked away. And looks like Richard will go to the line to shoot two. That foul was called against Chris Kuzemka as he reached in against Richard on transition. We talked about it earlier, Ethan, the transition offense for Florida looking good so far in this first half. It just seems like every time I'm looking up, this ball is on the Gators' offensive side of the court. They are constantly applying pressure, and Loyola just hasn't been able to keep up speed-wise and especially height-wise against guys like, like Ken Logden. Richard misses his first free throw, 86% from the line last season. His second one is right through the net, and it's good. 29 to 15. Florida is up in this one. Just over eight minutes to play in the first half. Perry now has it for Loyola. A little shake and bake against Clayton. Gives it over to Illich. Now with DK, gets it back to Perry. Top of the key three off the back iron. And Cotton comes up with it for Florida. Clayton now has it on the right wing. Back out to Condon. Clayton again. Into the right corner for Kugel. Pump fakes. Inside to Condon. Back and down DK. And DK pokes it out of bounds. And that'll bring up a timeout. Well, I definitely think Loyola's trying to run this offense mostly through Dion Perry to start. And for the sophomore, I don't know how well it's going to work out for them if they keep going with him as the main guy. We mentioned that DK was another option. He's out there. They're trying to get the ball to him as much as they can. But Florida's defense has just been overwhelming. Yeah, Condon did a great job in those last couple possessions, keeping Perry away from the basket, not letting him get inside. So with 7.38 to play in this first half, the Gators lead it 29 to 15 over the Greyhounds. You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Go to school with your children, or say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. I'm lucky to grow up where I could be whatever I want. I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. In the news, a small boy was rescued from abuse today by a magic trick. Witnesses say a bully had the boy pinned down. This guy was hitting Jimmy pretty hard. And I said something. Humane at BeHumane.org. I'm Sally, a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Uh, excuse me, hi. What do you think this place needs? I'd like to see more parking. More playgrounds. Free movies. Ah, uh, that's easy, better restaurants. And you, uh, what do you think this place needs? This place? Oh, more ice cream trucks. Okay, <laughs> uh, how about you? Wi-Fi everywhere? I was thinking more money in the pockets of local families come tax time. Um, can I change my answer? I was just kidding about the ice cream. Oh, that's way better. Uh, now that you mention it. When it comes to getting better tax refunds into the hands of local families, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to... Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. I'm, I'm Hugh Green alongside Ethan Ive. The Gators lead Loyola 29 to 15 with 7.38 to go in this first half. The Gators will have it on the right sideline. Walter Clayton Jr. has it at the top of the key. Left-handed dribble, now backs it out to the right wing for Samuel. Dribbling inside, spins around, nowhere to go into Richard who tries to get it up, but a shot clock violation will be called before the shot. And that's a turnover for Florida as Loyola, Maryland will get it back. Bringing it up the court for Loyola is Samuel Gibbs, who's in for the first time tonight. Kuzemka with it, now into Commander. DK has it. Back to Commander. On the outside, dribbles past Richard. Inside with the left hand, good job. That one's good, 29 to 17, the Gators lead it now. 
Florida has not made a field goal in the last four minutes of this game. As Kugel has it, now gets it inside to Condon. That one's no good off the backboard. Offensive rebound by Samuel. Walter Clayton Jr. from the free throw line. Jumper is good. 31 to 17, Florida leads it. Just under seven to play in the first half. Coming the other way for Loyola is Gibbs. Out to Kuzemka, inside to DK. Now it's a commander. DK back with it. Now it's Illich on the left wing. Back to DK. A lot of Loyola players moving around. A double team trap in the right corner into DK, who passes it up to Illich with the right hand to layup. Is good. 31 to 19. Gators lead as they come back with it quickly. Richard now with it. Out to Condon. Now Kugel on the right side. Out to Clayton at the logo. Dribbling inside. Fakes a shot inside to Samuel. Double team down there. And that shot was blocked out of bounds by Milos Illich. It's a rare uncomfortable possession for the Gators. Samuel was, was left with nowhere to go, trapped under the basket there. And after that possession, Samuel taken out of the game for Thomas Houck for Florida. Ball was inbounded, but a foul called against Condon of the Gators. And that's another turnover for Florida. So a couple not so good looking possessions for the Gators in the last couple minutes. So Loyola will get it back now as they have it in the backcourt with Samuel Gibbs going left to right. Gibbs directing traffic inside to DK. Dribble it, right hand, reverse layup is good with the left. Nice job. Gators lead it 31 to 21 now as Walter Clayton comes the other way for Florida. Off the backboard, no good. Coming back the other way is Commander for Loyola. Dribbling it around the basket. They're down by just 10 now. Step back, no shot there. Commander now with it at the top of the key. Left-handed shot from about 16 off the rim and Clayton comes up with it for Florida. Now Richard on the right wing. Fakes a shot, gives it up to Kugel in his bright pink shoes. Behind the back dribble. Loses it for a second. Gives it up to Richard. Now Condon from the top of the key. No good. Offensive rebound by Thomas Houck. And a foul called against Golden DK of Loyola. Houck looking good so far in his first game in the orange and blue. The freshman out of New Oxford, Pennsylvania. Yeah, good job by Houck there. And as he was fouled, that was the eighth foul against Loyola in the half. So it'll be one and one shooting for the Gators and Condon here. Oh, sorry, Houck. His first free throw is off the back iron and Loyola comes up with it. Perry coming down for the Greyhounds. Fakes the screen from DK. Now DK has it. On the right wing, looking for Commander. Can't find him. Now he gets it inside to Commander. Now backs it outside. Back to Perry. Under 10 seconds in the shot clock. Perry inside dribble outside to Illich on the right corner. His three is no good. Fight for the rebound, and it was tipped out of bounds by DK of Loyola, and the Gators will get it back. Substitution for the Gators as hand logs and comes back in for Condon. 4.33 to go in this first half. The lead is now at just 10 for the Gators as they are up 31 to 21. Remember, they started this game on a 16 to nothing run in the first few minutes. Aberdeen now with it for Florida. Screen from Hauk. Now he has it. Outside of Kugel on the right wing, tries to jam it on the defender, but no good. Hand logs him with the offensive rebound. It, he slams it home, a 33 to 21 lead for Florida. Commander now with it for Loyola. Inside to Fowray. Back out to Perry. Working on Aberdeen. Gets it in, inside to Fowray, tipped away from Hauk. Now Fowray, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Throws it completely away right to Kugel as he's driving down the court all by himself, slams it home, but an offensive foul called against Riley Kugel as he shoved the defender out of the way. That's a tough call there. Yeah, that's tough, but Riley Kugel knows the mistake he just made. That was essentially 
a golden opportunity there. I am not quite sure what Alonso uh, Faure had in mind when he was making that pass, but Kugel was right there to intercept it, and unfortunately, he just shoulder-checked uh, Perry right over on the left side as he was trying for that basket. So with 3.50 to play in this first half, Florida leads it 33-21. to 21. You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Sound of someone correctly installing a car seat. And this is the sound of someone incorrectly installing a car seat. Correctly? Incorrectly. Hear the difference? No? That's because installing a car seat incorrectly is terribly easy. So much so, 75% of adults install them wrong. For simple instructions on how to get it right, visit buckleupforlife.org. Ah, perfectly executed. Create links between language and literacy and prepares them for a better academic future. I figure I have the time and they have the need. My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Hey, Russell Wilson here, and I know how important exercise is. It's essential. It's essential. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids stay active and play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids. Healthy kids. But what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Because great things happen when we live united. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. As the Gators lead the Loyola Maryland Greyhounds 33 to 21 with 3.50 left to play in this first half. Your leading scorer tonight for the Gators so far is Tyrese Samuel with seven. Loyola has it now, Perry gives it up to Faure, looking for an answer. Perry back with it to the right wing for Illich who rises up for three off the front iron a fight for the rebound, hand locks and comes up with it for Florida. Kugel with a behind the back dribble outside to Clayton to the right corner for Aberdeen. Pump fake, driving it inside, draws the foul, but can't convert the shot. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Gators have been aggressive in the paint all game long, and even if they're not making those shots go down, they've been drawing the fouls consistently. Yeah, they've already shot 11 free throws. This will be number 12 and 13, but they are just five of 11 on those free throws, so they're gonna wanna convert more of these good opportunities. As that Aberdeen free throw rolls around the rim and is no good. The Florida lead stays at 12 as Tyrese Samuel comes back into the game and Hauk sits down. So Aberdeen to shoot his second free throw here. 321 to play in the first half. His free throw is good. That'll extend the lead to 13, 34 to 21. Florida leads it. Steins now with it for Loyola. Gives it up to Perry. Now Commander at the top of the key. Right wing Illich. Looking for Perry, driving in inside. Gives it up to Faure, rejected by a hand locked in. And Clayton coming the other way. Gives it up to Kugel who jams it home. 36-21. Florida leads. Perry now with it for Loyola. Gives it up to Steins. Right wing three punched out. And Commander comes back with it for Loyola. Steins dribbling inside. Fowray on the inside. Defended by hand. Longton again. Right hook shot. No good. And rebounded by Samuel. Now to Clayton. Gives it back to Samuel. Working on Illich on the inside. Left-handed shot is no good, but a foul is called. And Samuel will go back to the line once more. 2.21 to play now in the first half. Well, if this first half has been any indication, maybe by the time we get into the fourth quarter, we'll see the appearance of Alex uh, Klatsky, huh? <laughs> yeah, Alex Klatsky, maybe Jack May as well. A couple of walk-ons who would love to get on the floor, and I'm sure the the Rowdy Reptiles would love it as well if they if they got into the game. Maybe even Bennett Anderson too, a guy who was a student manager last year for this Gators team is now walking onto the program. Yeah, that's exciting for, for Anderson and his first year, he's a senior, but his first year with the Gators now, as Samuel made his first free throw to extend the lead 37 to 21. Florida's up. 
Samuel's second free throw is also good. So the Gators now lead it by 17, 38 to 21. Commander with it for Loyola. Gets it inside to DK. His back to Handlockton, now dribbling it. Back and down Handlockton. Right handed shot is good. A nice move on the inside from DK. 38 23, Florida leads. Coming back the other way are the Gators and a pass inside to Samuel. And Tyree Samuel will go back to the line again as he was fouled on the pass. Samuel, the foul machine in the last couple of minutes here. Yeah, Samuel's, these will be his seventh and eighth free throw attempts of the game already. And we're just in the first half here. Gators are in the double bonus here, so he will be shooting two. He's three for six so far tonight. <clears throat> His first shot is right through, and it's good. Gators now lead it 39 to 23. Two minutes to go in this first half. Lots of pink shoes on the Gators. Uh, Samuel and Kugel both on the floor I'm looking at right now. Reminds me of when a uh, old friend Jason Jatobo would always wear some funny shoes. Oh yeah, Jatobo, he, he, was a, he was definitely a character on the floor. Samuel makes his second free throw, 40 to 23, Gator lead. Commander with it for Loyola, tries to get it inside to DK. Can't handle the pass, but he comes up with it again. Back and down Samuel is DK. Spinning around, now comes Handlockson with a double, but DK up and in. DK taking over the game on the inside. 40 to 25, a 15 point lead now for Florida. Minute and a half to play it's in this first half. Clayton with it on the left wing. To the top of the key for Samuel. Out to the left corner for Kugel. Driving it inside, up and under, layup is good with the right hand from Riley Kugel. That gives him nine points so far. 42 to 25, the Gators lead. And that ball was tipped out of bounds, I believe. And the Gators will come back with it. Another turnover, an unforced error that time from Loyola. Just over a minute to play. Clayton now has it for the Gators. To the left wing with Richard, who's back into the game now. Hand logged in with it at the logo. Out to Clayton. Trying to get it inside to hand logged it. Stolen away up to Perry on the inside. Rejected by Clayton off the glass. But Commander comes back with it for the Greyhounds and he lays it back in. 42-27 Gator lead now. 50 seconds to play as Kugel has it for Florida. Pulls up for three from the top of the key. That almost missed everything. And Loyola comes back with it. Commander running the floor. Right handed layup off the rim, no good. Samuel with the rebound for the Gators. Clayton slowing it down now for Florida as they go right to left. 30 seconds to play, about an eight second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Gets it inside to Samuel. To the left corner for Richard for three. Off the front rim. And Commander comes back with it for Loyola. And they will have the last shot of this half. As the shot clock's turned off, 10 seconds to play in the half. Perry with it at the top of the key, working on Clayton. Gives it up to Commander. Three seconds to go, right in. Outside to Brown for three from the left corner is good at the buzzer. And that drops the lead to 12, 42 to 30. The Gators lead it at halftime. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for the halftime show. You're listening to Gator Basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Annoying. You're so annoying. Stop copying stop me. Copy me. Mom, tell her to stop copying me. Mom, tell her to stop talking to me. Kids will spend 10 minutes copying everything their sibling says. You're such a You're doofus. You're such a doofus. How about two minutes to brush their teeth? Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Mom! Mom. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ad Council. You are a healthy eater. Oranges for vitamin C, flaxseed, and mackerel for omega-3s. But did you know the same foods that are good for your body, i.e. not beef jerky, are also good for your eyes? Yep, research shows proper nutrition can impact the development of cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, two leading causes of blindness. So keep up the healthy munching, my well-fed friend. And for more easy ways to keep keeping your eyes healthy, see your optometrist or visit AOA.org.
These are the sounds of someone taking their eyes off the road. Texting while driving is more than distracting. It's dangerous. Do Florida a favor. When you're on the road, stay off the phone. A message from CTIA, America's Wireless Companies, and the National Safety Council. Hey you, yeah you, sit right there, I gotta tell you something. I bet you know someone with type 2 diabetes. Guaranteed, you know why? Because one out of every three little kids is gonna develop diabetes in their lifetime. That is gonna lead to heart problems, strokes, and even blindness. I'm John Sally, and I'm telling you, it ain't gotta be that way. Now you can up your defenses by eating more fruits and vegetables, having more vegetarian and vegan meals. These steps can be the power plays to protect you and your family against the risk of diabetes. Learn more or go to blockdiabetes.org. Okay. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air, we're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. Welcome back to Science Today. And we already have our next caller. Welcome. Who's this? Hi, I'm Philip. Hello, Philip. You sound really young. <laughs> Not really. I'm nine. Oh, wow. You're still in elementary school, right? Does that matter? Oh, no, not at all. What's your question? Well, I know the molecular formula for water is H2O. I also know that hydrocarbon is CH3, CH2, 50, CH3. Glucose is C6H12O6. The general formula for an alkene is CnH2n plus 2. But what I can't seem to find is any scientific formula for Bob. Bob? My goldfish. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, go to mypyramid.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA. From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn up on the beach. But what held the boys' eyes in awful trance were the figures, the eaters of men, cannibals. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move. In that very instant, he heard a crashing in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing through the jungle. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, thinking only of his canoe. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Sperry. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, live from the Exitec Arena at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. Opening day for the Florida Gators men's basketball team, and the Gators have a 42-30 to 30 lead over the Loyola, Maryland Greyhounds. Ethan I here alongside Hugh Green for the halftime show, and we are joined now by noted Gators expert and inside the Gators reporter, Zach Weiss. Zach, how are we doing? Pretty excited to join you today. It's good stuff so far, so I want to get thoughts from both both of you, Hugh and Zach. What are your general thoughts about what we've seen so far tonight? Well, I think our transfers are making a major, major impact. I mean, Tyree Samuel looks absolutely fantastic. Alex Condon obviously looks like he is what Todd Golden was hoping that Alex Sismith would be last season. Stretch on the floor looks good. I don't love what I've seen out of some of our key guys from last season, most notably Riley Kugel and Will Richard, but it's the first game of the season. It's against an opponent that they're lightly taking a little lightly, so it makes sense. But overall, I love what I've seen from the transfers and the depth of this team. Yeah, definitely. And you touched on it a little bit. Richard has just three points tonight. I feel like he needs to get a little bit more involved in the offense a little bit, trying to get a couple more shots up. But as you said, these transfers are doing really well. Uh, Samuel leads all scorers with 11 points so far. He's been very aggressive getting, on, getting in the inside. He has eight free throw attempts already tonight. Another thing I noticed throughout the first half was that transition offense. The Gators defense certainly was on it throughout, and in that time where they were trying to get back on the other half of the court, Florida was really dominating. Yeah, I mean, I love what I've seen out of Walter Clayton Jr. tonight. I think that he is the perfect point guard 
for what this team needs for the system under Todd Bolden. I mean, Todd Bolden comes from the West Coast. He's looking to push the pace. And last season, you know, with guys that he had, like Kyle Lofton and Myron Jones, really good players, but slowed the pace down a little bit. Walter Clayton Jr., great defensively, you know, poking the ball from behind, pushing the pace, finding guys like Kugel and Samuel down the court. I think this team moves faster and looks really, really good with Clayton at the home. Obviously, the Gators are without guys like Colin Castleton, Alex Fudge this year. They have some leaders on this team, guys like Kugel and Will Richard, who have returned. Is it a different brand of Florida basketball that we're seeing? What do you think about that? I think what we're seeing is Todd Golden, year two of his system coming from that West Coast, that cut, pick and roll, move the ball, fast break type of offense. I think we're seeing him implementing that system, but with a new group of guys, with an older, more mature more deep group and I think that what we're seeing is the system now in year two rather than you know something brand new yeah definitely I, I totally agree uh, Todd Golden in his second year as you said trying to establish his own brand uh, on this Florida team after uh, the departure of Mike White a couple years ago and I feel like it's looking good for his new guys so far tonight we also saw uh, Condon as you said a good freshman coming in this season uh, shooting the ball from beyond the arc and he, he's been locked he's been uh, pinpoint from beyond the arc so far a couple threes he has six points tonight two for three from three-point land and as you said Clayton facilitating the ball a lot he has he has three assists so far to go along with five points and he's he's been very good so far tonight uh, at facilitating and getting his own points as well. Yeah, and something that we have to remember is that this team is only going to get deeper. I mean, guys like Alex Shimchuk, like I've mentioned, I mean, Zion Poland's out the first three games of the season. He's going to be back, and he's a projected starter. He might start next to Clayton. This team's only going to get deeper, so I think what we're seeing tonight is a lot of guys who may not get as much action going forward, so I think building that confidence in case of injuries and things like that is absolutely huge. One guy that I really liked in that first half was Denzel Aberdeen. He was one of the guys coming into this year that was talked about as perhaps the most improved returner. What did you see from him? I think he is the best perimeter defender on this team. I mean, Walter Clayton looked great, but in the minutes that Aberdeen was in, I mean, he's so quick, so athletic, so twitchy, so long defensively as a guard. I absolutely loved what I saw from him on that end of the floor. And offensively, I think he's one of the most skilled players on this team. I think he has some maturing to do with shot selection, but as just a sophomore who didn't get a ton of play, play time as a freshman, that's expected. But I think that going forward this year and on to next year as a junior, I think he has so much room to expand his game and really, really help this team. And last thing, what do you hope to see from the second half for the Gators here? Riley Kugel, more of Riley Kugel. He's supposed to be the best player on this team. He's supposed to be a NBA draft lottery prospect. He had an exceptional freshman season last season. I want to see him be aggressive. I want to see him shoot the ball. I want to see him play in the system and look like the leader that fans and Todd Golden expected him to be coming into the season. So that was Zach Weiss of Inside the Gators with your halftime report. About six and a half minutes to go until the second half here from the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. A 42-30 lead at the half. The Florida Gators leading Loyola, Maryland. You're listening to Florida Gators basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Annoying. You're so annoying. Stop copying stop me. Stop copying me. Mom, tell her to stop copying me. Mom, tell her to stop copying me. Kids will spend 10 minutes copying everything their sibling says. You're such a You're doofus. You're such a doofus. How about two minutes to brush their teeth? Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Mom! Mom! A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ad Council. You are a healthy eater. Oranges for vitamin C, flaxseed, and mackerel for omega-3s. But did you know the same foods that are good for your body, i.e. not beef jerky, are also good for your eyes? Yep, research shows proper nutrition can impact the development of cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, two leading causes of blindness. So keep up the healthy munching, my well-fed friend. And for more easy ways to keep keeping your eyes healthy, see your optometrist or visit AOA.org. These are the sounds of someone taking their eyes off the road. 
texting while driving is more than distracting. It's dangerous. Do Florida a favor. When you're on the road, stay off the phone. A message from CTIA, America's Wireless Companies, and the National Safety Council. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Both teams taking the court here as we prepare for the second half action. The Florida Gators leading Loyola, Maryland, 42 to 30 here in the season opener, live from the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. Ethan, I, Hugh Green, and we're now joined by a good friend of mine, Brandon Hernandez of the Independent Florida Alligator. Brandon, what are your thoughts so far on this first half? Well, um, pleasure to be here, Ethan. But let me tell you, this first half, defensively and offensively, the Gators really just reducing themselves to kind of a low back man-to-man -man defense. Now they're really playing behind in the basic backcourt. And you have situations where you have situ where big, you know what, let me get to the point real quick. The three point is an issue on defense and on offense. Right now, Riley Kugel, who was really a preseason SEC honoree, now has himself, you know, not making a single basket from behind the arc. And now you have Loyola Maryland, I mean, they're taking advantage right now. We're talking about the buzzer beater that was done by David Brown the third. He right now is two and four from the floor, let alone two and four from three. So that's taking a lot of advantage from the defensive side of the Gators, really reducing themselves back towards the basket. And now you have yourself a 42-30 lead. However, this was a lead that was going near 20 points for the Gators. Indeed, they started off this game 16 to nothing. Four for 11 from beyond the arc to start this game. They were among the worst teams in that department last year. That's why they brought in a guy like Walter Clayton Jr. who shot 43% from beyond the arc. What have you seen from him in this first half? No, absolutely, and Clayton himself. I mean, we talk about a guy from Iona and a Florida kid. He really wanted to be in this program. I remember even talking about him preseason that he wanted to bring back that type of legacy, and he's been able to do that facilitating the ball, getting a lot of assists, let alone how this game even started. A steal, fast transition offense. That's what Todd Golden and the Gators want to see out of him. And offensively, they're going to have a, need a lot more going from him, knowing that Kugel and Will Richard are kind of struggling right now. So watch for Clayton in it as well. I would also have to go outside to just the front court of Alex Condon and Tyree Sam. They've been phenomenal, and really the duo has combined for the most points as the duo for the Florida Gators in the first half. Yeah, you definitely said it. Uh, Condon and, and Samuel combined for 17 points so far of the Florida, of the Gators, 42. And what, what have you thought about the starting center, 7-1, uh, trying to fill the shoes of uh, of Colin Kasten last year, uh, Micah Hanlock? Well, he's been really great. The only issue is, is he hasn't been getting a lot of self on the floor, right? And we're only talking about t less than 10 minutes on the floor for the Sun Belt freshman of the year last season. Now, the thing I really find curious is because, of course, with Todd Gold and his offense, last year we saw with Colin Castle and Alex Fudge, they took the most three-point attempts ever in a season in their collegiate careers. We're seeing that now, whereas Micah, he's not really the best three-point shooter. Last season at Marshall, he only had 9% from behind the arc on his attempts. So now he's being more or less, you know, regressing in his minutes for that of Alex Condon, as well as the freshmen's and you know, he's got his own guy from the transfer portals out there, all of them shooting threes. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in the second half. Maybe they might switch things up with Micah. Micah does look solid, however, not getting a lot of minutes out there. What are your keys to the second half, Brandon? Well, the biggest key in the second half will definitely be, for one, Riley Kugel. He needs to be able to slow down for the Gators, as I mentioned before, struggling from behind the arc. And, you know, he did a lot of woos and woes from the crowds early on, but at the same time, he's got to play smart. He's got to be able to adapt to his availability because – I mean, the same thing goes with Denzel Aberdeen. Aberdeen, I've been getting himself a lot of minutes early off of this game, probably more minutes than he's seen from last season, the first half of last season at least. He's been able to take care of Dion Perry, who is only 5'8". Those type of matchups, you need to take yourself towards the basket, be able to attack him on the first <laughs> quick step. And Riley Kugel, he has that matchup. He should be able to finish. About a minute to go until the second half begins here from the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. I want to thank Brandon Hernandez for joining us. We'll be right back for the second half here on the Orange and Blue Sports Network, a 42 to 30 Gators lead. He was rescued from abuse today by a magic trick. Witnesses say a bully had the boy pinned down. This guy was hitting Jimmy pretty hard, and I said somebody should do something. Moments later, a street magician arrived on the scene. Police reports state he covered the bully with his coat. What happened next is still under investigation. The bully turned into a bunch of kittens. The victim left the scene unharmed. Boy, you never see that happen. That's because it doesn't. If you see abuse or neglect, learn what you can do from American Humane at BeHumane.org. I'm Sally, a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Uh, excuse me, hi. What do you think this place needs? I'd like to see more parking. More playgrounds. Free movies. Ah, oh, that's easy. Better restaurants. 
And you, uh, what do you think this place needs? This place? Oh, more ice cream trucks. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about you? Wi-Fi everywhere? I was thinking more money in the pockets. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, live from the O-Dome in Gainesville. Here we are for the second half, 42-30. Gators lead the Loyola Maryland Greyhounds here in their season opener. Ethan and I have been Hugh Green with you as the Gators will inbound the ball from the far side to begin this one. Clayton Jr., Tyree Samuel, get it started as it goes to Will Richard on the right wing. He will sling it back out to Kugel at the logo, back to hand Logan at the top. Looking for help here, and he's got Kugel on the left side, and he gets tripped up there by D'Angelo Steins, and he does draw the foul, so Kugel will get to the line here to start the second half. Yeah, that, that'll be something to look forward to for Steins. That's his third foul already, and he just started the second half, so their starting point guard might be, might be out of the game a little bit in the second half. Will not be any free throws there as it's inbounded to Samuel for Florida over to Clayton taking it up the left side into the paint now spinning around and he gets the foul tried to go up from the right block and I believe he was fouled there by Golden DK another check that that was Dion Perry on the foul yeah two fouls in the first 18 seconds so it looks like the the Gators might be getting into the bonus rather quickly so far in the, to start this second half It'll be a couple of shots here for Clayton Jr. as he misses the first one. It goes off the back of the iron. We talked about Clayton being the number one ranked nationally free throw shooter last season. He misses his first one here. Second offering is going to tip out of the basket yet again. So 0 for 2 as Gators scramble for it here as the ball squibs away. Clayton Jr. picks it up from beyond the arc. Now driving towards it and he goes for the leaping dunk. It's tipped away. Regained by Loyola. Up with it, Perry up the left side. And he's got Commander, left corner all alone. Three ball, too strong off the rim and out. Picked up by Kugel, he takes it up for Florida. Kugel stops at the top of the key looking for help. He's got Samuel over to Richard. Now on the left side, Richard puts it up for Samuel. He slams it home. Florida up 46, check that, 44, 30. 19 minutes to go in the ball game. Now for Loyola, Perry with it at the logo. Gets it to DK, guarded by Hand Logan. That ball goes over now to D'Angelo Steins. Now back to Perry. Steins again. Three ball left wing is way over an air ball, and that's going to prompt the chance from the Rowdy Reptiles. Oh, yeah, they're going to be telling, they're going to be letting Steins know it all night long now that he airballed that one three. But we go back a possession. What a play, a, a lob to Tyree Samuel on the inside, dunked it over the Loyola defender, and what a, what a slam home from the Gators. And it looks like Golden DK of Loyola is in some pain. He's crouched down right in the paint there on Loyola's side of the court, clutching his neck with his right hand. So they're gonna tend to him, and meanwhile, an injury timeout has been called here. Yeah, hopefully he'll be all right, and he may have gotten, getting hit in the neck, uh, and it looks like they may be reviewing for a flagrant fl foul here, possibly, as they, they announced that the player was under review. Don't have any indication as to who that might have been on. No replay available to us. But it looks like they were getting the ball to DK, at least for Loyola, a little bit more in that second half. They started out facilitating a lot of those plays to Dion Perry. Didn't really get anything going in that first couple of minutes. Remember, they were down 16 to nothing at one point. Once they started running their offense through DK, it kind of picked up the pace. Yeah, DK has been a, a force to be reckoned with on the inside. He already has, he has six points and he's made all three of his shots and all of them coming inside the paint with little jump hooks uh, against Handlogs and, and Condon, respectively, on the inside. But uh, as you said, DK has done a good job of being uh, uh, of allowing the team to play through him. Right now for UF, their leading scorer, Tyree Samuel, with 13 points, and Riley Kugel just behind with nine, as it looks like we're just about set to resume play here. Looks like DK is going to be taken to the locker room uh, to maybe get some tests done on his neck or head area. Hopefully he'll be back into the game soon. That's a big loss for the Greyhounds here. In to replace him is Milos Ilic. Native of Serbia as Florida inbounds the ball. Richard with it. Now Samuel at the logo, dribbling to the left side. And now double team, still with it. Hands it off to Clayton Jr. Back out to hand, logged in. Three ball from beyond the arc. He's got it. 
From the top of the key, Han Logan knocks it down. 47-30, 18 and a half minutes to go in the game as Perry takes it back up for the Greyhounds. Standing dribble at the logo. Bounces this one out to Faure. Back over to Commander, double teamed. Looking for help, he's got Perry. Slings it out to the left corner. As Illich dribbles it towards his right side and it's pass is intercepted by Kugel. Driving it towards the basket and in a layup is down from the right block. Riley Kugel again. Points in transition for the Gators. 49-30, 18 minutes to go. Harry back with it at the logo for Loyola as they look to get something going here for the Greyhounds. Commander flips it out to Faure. Circles back for Steins from the right block. A nice right-handed layup there. A lot of pressure on him. Now 49-32 Gators, 17-42 on the clock. Clayton Jr. taking it up the left side of the court. Hands it off to Riley Kugel. Double teamed there, steps back. Back out to Clayton. Kugel at the logo with it. Takes a step to the left inside the paint and takes a nice little floater there inside at the SEC logo. 51-32 Gators, 17-23 to go. Perry back with it for Loyola. Commander now on the right side. And he facilitates it back out to Illich who hands it off to Stein. Stein's going left, outmatched with the height there by Samuel. He gets it backed out to Illich at the top. Illich and Samuel driving into the paint together, and this one blocked, but Illich wins the battle, tips it in on the rebound. 51-34 Gators, 17 minutes even to go. Clayton Jr. at the logo for Florida. They're going left to right. Hands this one off to Will Richard. Now back out to Samuel, top of the key. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Illich. He takes a nice step back shot, and that is good. 53-34 Gators, 16-40 to go. Florida's offense has been on a roll here. Four for their last four on field goals. This one goes out on the right side to Stein. Stein's looking for help, has Commander at the low post and he puts it in from the right block. No one there to guard him really. 53-36 now, Gators with the lead. 16-20 on the clock. It'll be Han Logan with it. Sends this one to the left side for Kugel. Now to Samuel, back to Han Logan inside the paint. He posts up and he gets it down and one for the transfer. Micah Han Logan has made his presence felt tonight. All seven feet and one inch of him. Yeah, Han Logson has been, has been an absolute force on the inside in the second half in the first four minutes or so. And that play, getting it inside, he had he established good position on the inside of the defender and that allowed him to put it up and in and draw the foul for the first and one of the game for Florida. So Han Logden will toe the charity stripe here. Last year 54% in his only year at Marshall. Sunbelt freshman of the year misses off the back of the iron and now Loyola will take it back up. Perry on the right side. Perry a standing dribble toe to toe with Clayton. Now hands it off to Brown. It goes over to Perry again. Shifted back out to Steins, going on the left side, toe to toe with Kugel, and it is Steins who hands it down from the left block on the layup. 55 38 Gators, 15 46 to go in the ball game. And logged in with it. Back to Clayton, and logged it again, all alone beyond the yard, and there it is. Completely unguarded at the top of the key, another three ball, 58 38 Gators, clear by 20, 15 and a half to go. With it now is Golden DK. He's back out there for Loyola. Over to Perry. Perry dribbling right. And slung across the court here to David Brown the third, who misses the three ball off the rim and out. Picked up by the Gators. Riley Kugel with it. Kugel at the logo. Hands it to Clayton Jr. from the right wing. Misses the three off the top of the rim. And now time called here. Looks like there may have been a slip there by Hand Logden. Micah Hand Logden. Hopefully he's all right. It looks like. Is a little banged up on the inside. He, he shot 8% from the three-point stripe last year, and he's two for two tonight, so they're going to have to step out there and respect his three-point game a little more if Loyal's going to want to come back into this one. Gators certainly on a roll here. Seven of their last seven have been knocked down. We'll step aside here for the timeout. 15-10 to go in the second half. 58-38, the Gators lead Loyola, Maryland. You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. United. 
I read to children as part of United Way's education program. It helps them create links between language and literacy and prepares them for a better academic future. I figure I have the time and they have the need. My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Hey you, yeah you, stay right there, I gotta tell you something. I bet you know someone with type 2 diabetes. Guaranteed, you know why? Because one out of every three little kids is gonna develop diabetes in their lifetime. That is gonna lead to heart problems, strokes, and even blindness. I'm John Sally, and I'm telling you, it ain't gotta be that way. Now you can up your defenses by eating more fruits and vegetables, having more vegetarian and vegan meals. These steps can be the power plays to protect you and your family against the risk of diabetes. To learn more, go to blockdiabetes.org. I'm kidding. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key. You can be part of the solution. Please contact Save the Manatee Club right now. Call 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. The score 58-38. The Gators lead the Loyola Maryland Greyhounds here. 15-10 to go in the ballgame. Ethan Ive and Hugh Green. Hugh, your first thoughts here five minutes into this second half. Yeah, Riley Kugel, uh, we talked about it at the half with uh, Brandon and Zach. And they talked about how Kugel needed to be a focal point for this Gators team in this second half is he, he is supposed to be the best player on this team and he's done just that. He now has 13 points, uh, second to Samuel in scoring for the Florida Gators. Perry takes it up for Loyola, moving right to left, hands it off to Steins, dribbling to the left side, back over to Perry at the left wing, toe to toe with Clayton Jr. Now it goes to Golden DK at the top of the key, back out to Perry around the logo, shot clock at 10, over to Brown. Now it's at the right block for DK, He's right there with Condon, and DK wins the battle, hooks it around him. Now 58-40 Gators, 14-40 to go. Clayton Jr. with Alex Condon. Now over to Riley Kugel, he's being double teamed now with Chris Kuzmica. Now Kugel into the paint, and he gets it down, forces Kuzmica down as well, and draws the foul. Yeah, a little stare down there by Riley Kugel as he had the and one over Kuzemka. What a what a drive and what a basket by Riley Kugel. We talked about his aggressiveness just a couple minutes ago, and there it is again. Now he has 15 on the game, and the Gators lead it by 20. Certainly has been a strong start to this second half for Riley Kugel. Him and Will Richard trying to play bigger roles here as they are the top two returners to this Gators team. His opening day, they've got Virginia. And Florida A&M coming up next in the big rivalry game against Florida State scheduled for November 17th, a Friday night, just a couple of weeks from now. 60 to 40 is the score, Gators up by 20. As a free throw is missed by Kugel. Now before play resumes, we'll see a substitution as Alex Condon comes off. Thomas Huck is back out there. Looks like Condon has a little bit of an injury, maybe a cramp on his uh, left leg. Yeah, we saw him holding just above the kneecap there on the left leg, so hopefully he's okay as Loyola Maryland will take this one up. Perry, been facilitating as of late. He's with Clayton at the logo, dribbling left, hands it off to Commander. He tries to alley-oop for DK. He's got it and blocked there by Riley Kugel as he tried to put it up from the right side. And a foul has been called against, I believe, it is Thomas Houck. Yeah, a good pass inside there to uh, DK, who we saw walk into the locker room earlier with an injury, but since he's been back, he's been a force on the inside, and we saw it again there now at the free throw line. So Golden DK will take a couple of free throws here. He drains the first one. Now 60-41 Gators at 14-20 to go in this second half. Gators started this game 16 to nothing, but the uh, tail end of that first half, Loyola was trying to get back into it. DK for a second attempt, drains them both. 60-42 to go. And here's Clayton Jr. taking it up for the Gators on the far side of the court. Plenty of options here as they scatter around. Kugel to Hauk. 
over to Denzel Aberdeen on the right wing. Aberdeen dribbling right, standing around, toe to toe with Commander. Bounce pass goes to Kugel. Kugel with Kuzmica. And now Kugel into the paint, puts it up, and it's off the backboard and in. Double team, doesn't matter. Kugel gets it done. 62 42 Gators. Perry back with it for Loyola. They sling it up quickly. Kuzmica back to Perry over to DK. Tries to set the screen. There goes to Commander from the logo. Inbound pass to the paint is deflected and Kugel gets it back for the Gators. Kugel up the far side. Bounce pass to Hauk and he gets it down. David Brown the third tried to bat it away but Hauk wins the battle. Six foot nine. He made every inch count. 64-42. And draws the foul as well so Hauk will tow the charity stripe. Three and ones already in the second half for Florida. That time it was Hauk taking it inside with the right hand, high off the glass, layup and in. And it's been great for Kugel in this second half. He has five steals already on the defensive end. Hauk gets the end one down, 65-42 Gators, 13-34 to go. As Loyola back with it on the other side, DK slings it out to Commander, back to DK at the top of the key. DK looking for help. He's guarded by Tyrese Samuel over to Brown the third. Back out to Perry, dribbling left side, and now a foul is called here. Both referees signaling that at the exact same time. It is on Thomas Hauk for the second time in this half. Yeah, it was a big battle down there between Hauk as he got switched on to DK. Uh, the two fighting for position on the low block, and Hauk was called for the foul. The Perry will inbound this one from the baseline as he sends it over to Commander, right block, and he can't quite get it in on the layup. Picked up by the Gators. It is Clayton Jr. with it for Florida as he battles through the paint through three bodies. He's got the layup on the left block. 67-42 Florida, 13 minutes to go in the ball game. Perry back with it now for Loyola. Over to Kuzmica, Commander at the logo. Bounce pass over to DK, goes going at it with Samuel. DK shuffling towards the paint and from the right block takes a shot. No good, but he draws the foul. It is on Tyrese Samuel. Yeah, Golden DK again, just pushing his way, bullying his way inside. He, he wasn't gonna do anything there, but put the ball up near the rim and he, he gets rewarded with two free throw attempts. He's already two for two tonight, last season. DK shot just 33% from the free throw stripe. Gators on a 7-0 run over the last 47 seconds. They've made four of their last four shots as DK cannot connect here on his first free throw attempt. It goes off the right side of the rim. And now we'll see a couple of changes here for Loyola as Brown the third and Perry come off. Into play now is D'Angelo Steins, the transfer junior from Old Dominion. DK lines it up for his second attempt. Everyone ready to crash in, here it is. And it's down. 67-43 Gators, 12.54 to go in this ball game. Thomas Houck will inbound it from the opposite baseline for Florida. It goes to Clayton Jr. who takes it up. Over to Aberdeen, back out to Houck at the logo. Now it is Riley Kugel with it as he drives in towards the base and that one off the rim, but put back by Micah Handelogd and he was right there to clean up the rebound. 69-43 Gators, 12.35 to go. Illich with it now, gets it over here to Steins at the logo, going at it with Aberdeen through three bodies, back out on the left side, Illich with it at the right wing. Inbounds it towards the paint here for this one deflected, and now it's picked up by Florida. Clayton Jr. with it. He dribbles to the left side across the court. Hand Logan back to Clayton Jr., and he knocks down Chris Kuz Kuzemka, and it's an offensive foul on Walter Clayton Jr. A yeah, good defensive position there from Kuzemka. Stood his ground and didn't move, and as uh, Clayton tried to do a hop, a hop step and, and stop, he just kind of ran over uh, Kuzemka, who, who's holding his lower body, and I think he may have gotten a shot there. 12-12 to go in the second half. 69-43 Gators, they are well in control of this one. For Florida, their top scorer now, Riley Kugel, 17 so far today. As Kuzemka will take it up for Loyola on the left side, hands it off to Commander. He goes to Falray. Back out from beyond the arc, Steins, and he drains the three ball from the right wing. Now 69-46 Gators, 11.53 to go. And Logden with it. 
This one gets out to Clayton on the left wing. Goes across the court with a pass to Aberdeen, but the play is whistled dead. I'm not sure. Oh, it looks to be a foul. I think it was called on Illich on the inside there. And he'll have a timeout now after, as the Gators will get it back after. So we'll take a break here. 69-46 is the score. Gators out in front. 11.47 to go. You're listening to Florida Gators men's basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. I'm lucky to grow up where I could be whatever I want. I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. In the news, a small boy was rescued from abuse today by a magic trick. Witnesses say a bully had the boy pinned down. This guy was hitting Jimmy pretty hard. And I said somebody should do something. Moments later, a street magician arrived on the scene. Police reports state he covered the bully with his coat. What happened next is still under investigation. The bully turned into a bunch of kittens. The victim left the scene unharmed. Boy, you'd never see that happen. That's because it doesn't. If you see abuse or neglect, learn what you can do from American Humane at BeHumane.org. I'm Sally, a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Uh, excuse me, hi. What do you think this place needs? I'd like to see more parking. More playgrounds. Free movies. Ah, uh, that's easy. Better restaurants. And you, uh, what do you think this place needs? This place? Oh, more ice cream trucks. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about you? Wi-Fi everywhere? I was thinking more money in the pockets of local families come tax time. Um, can I change my answer? I was just kidding about the ice cream. Oh, that's way better. Uh, now that you mention it. When it comes to getting better tax refunds into the hands of local families, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, live from the Exit Tech Arena at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. Ethan Ibe, Hugh Green, 69-46, Gators lead Loyola, Maryland. 11.47 to go. Gators inbounding the ball from their own basket. Clayton Jr. gets it out to Denzel Aberdeen at the left wing. He dribbles it over towards the top of the key. Now driving into the paint, and it's off the rim and out. Picked up by Loyola. Over to Kuzemka, who takes it up the left side of the court. Kuzemka with a standing dribble, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Richard. Hands it out to the left corner, dribbling in towards the paint here, and now back out beyond the arc to Kuzemka, who loses the handle on it, but it's picked up by Falray. Falray dribbling to the right. Hands it off to Kazemka again. Shot clock at 10. Fowray in and gets the layout from the left block. Loyola connects 69-48. The score. Gators out in front as Clayton Jr. has it. Will Richard with a three ball from the right corner. Can't connect. And it goes back out for Loyola. Tyson Commander with it. Bounce pass. Fowray. And he gets it down from the right block on the layup there. How couldn't guard him. Clayton Jr. back with it. Now to Hauk for Florida. Hands it off to Richard. Aberdeen has it at the left wing as and Logden sets the pick. Aberdeen the toss, the alley-oop, and Hen Logden sends it down. 71-50 the score. Gators ahead by 21. And 10.40 to go in the ball game. Loyola back with it. Commander has it. Now hands it over to Kuzemka. Again over to Steins. Tipped away from him, but he regains possession. Kuzemka hands it off. On the left wing now with it for Loyola is Illich over to Steins, left wing, three ball, connects with five on the shot clock. Steins with his second three ball of the game. 71-53 to go, 10-15 to go. Aberdeen with it for Florida. At the top of the key, dribbling left, slings it back out to Clayton Jr., guarded by Commander. Clayton in towards the paint, and he has the layup from the left block. Florida now up 73-53 and 10 minutes left. Kuzemka with it for Loyola. Over to Illich, and now Commander. And now the pass is tipped away by hand, logged in for Florida, but Loyola regains possession. Kuzemka with it at the logo. He's dribbling left, hands it off to Steins. Another three ball, and he sinks his second in as many possessions. How about that for D'Angelo Steins? It's 73-56, 9.43 on the clock, and a timeout call. Yeah, D'Angelo Steins really feeling it from beyond the arc now. He had no threes in that first half, but now he has three of them, and he has 10 points 
uh, sorry, 13 points on the night. So a good job by Steins there. For Steins, that equals his career high set against William and Mary last year. Shot just 22% from beyond the arc, but he's looking good tonight. Take another break here. It's a 73-56 lead for the Gators. 9.43 to go. You're listening to Florida Gators basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Annoying. He's so annoying. Stop copying stop me. Stop copying me. Mom, tell her to stop copying me. Mom, tell her to stop talking to me. Kids will spend 10 minutes copying everything their sibling says. You're such a You're doofus. You're such a doofus. How about two minutes to brush their teeth? Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Mom! Mom! A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ad Council. You are a healthy eater. Oranges for vitamin C, flaxseed, and mackerel for omega-3s. But did you know the same foods that are good for your body, i.e. not beef jerky, are also good for your eyes? Yep, research shows proper nutrition can impact the development of cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, two leading causes of blindness. So keep up the healthy munching, my well-fed friend. And for more easy ways to keep keeping your eyes healthy, see your optometrist or visit AOA.org. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. It's a 73-56 lead for the Florida Gators in their season opener against Loyola, Maryland. Ethan I, Hugh Green with you. 9.43 to go here in this ball game. Loyola has been on a bit of a run lately. Five of their last five field goals have gone in. Yeah, they've been on fire on the offensive end. The Gators have had no answer, especially for D'Angelo Steins on the perimeter. He has three threes in this second half. Tyree Samuel with it for Florida, moving left to right. Samuel now driving in towards the paint. Bounce pass here to Alex Condon, and there it is. Slam dunk from the left side, 75-56. Skaters, 9.25 to go. Loyola back with it on the far side of the court. It is Steins. Bounce pass to Kuzemka. Over to Perry on the left wing. Perry standing, looking for help. Now he's got David the third. Goes over to Falray. Back out to Steins, dribbling in. Lots of pressure here for the Gators, and now it is ruled out of bounds. It was a pass out on the right side for David Brown the third, but apparently his shoe was just out of bounds. Yeah, I think as he as he was trying to drive into his left side, put his foot put his right foot back and stepped over the line, and it's another turnover. The 11th of the game, or sorry, the 12th of the game for Loyola. Certainly been a storyline to follow as Florida inbounds the ball. Tyree Samuel driving in from the left side, and it's tipped away. Nice defense there by Golden DK for Loyola. It is Deion Perry back with it across the logo for Loyola. Back out to Brown the third, Commander. Now Perry back with it at the top. Guarded by Aberdeen. And now it's tipped away, the pass intended for DK. Condon has it from the right side, bounces into DK and sends it back on the right block with a shot to 77, 56 skaters, eight and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Perry back with it for the Greyhounds. Guarded by Aberdeen, hands it off to Commander, dribbling to the right side. Back over to Perry on the left wing to David, company the third on the left corner. And now the foul given here Golden DK trying to take a shot from the right block, and I believe that was on Alex Condon. Yeah, Condon and DK have been battling on the inside these last couple of possessions. Uh, Condon did a great job on that last uh, offensive possession, going strong at the rim. He's given up almost 40 pounds against DK, but he took it strong right into his chest and laid it in. And, and then on the other side, uh, DK did the same thing, and he got he, he got fouled by Condon in shooting free throws. DK's first free throw goes down. Now 77-57 Gators, 8.15 on the clock. DK missed a couple of minutes after a neck injury earlier this half, but he's now back on the court as he drains his second free throw. Now 77-58. Florida back with it, moving left to right. Denzel Abertine has the ball. Over to Tyree Samuel, over to Riley Kugel. Now it's Condon at the top, dribbling right. Has Will Richard as he drives in across. Over to Aberdeen at the top. Bounce pass to Condon in at the paint. Double teamed, Condon can't quite connect on the shot. It is an offensive rebound by Samuel. Now it's Samuel's turn as he dribbles in and the play is whistled dead here. So I believe that they, the shot 
20 seconds as it does when it hits the rim and the offense gets the ball back. But I think the official on the baseline didn't think it touched the rim and he thought there should have been less than 10 seconds to go on the shot clock, but it got reset and it looks like they're gonna go review it over there at the scorer's table. Well, it's been an interesting start to this second half for Florida. We wanted to see more from Riley Kugel. I think we have seen that so far. Yeah, that's for sure. He's seven for 12 now from the field, but a lot more aggressive on the offensive end and on the defensive end in the second half. He has five steals to go along with his uh, game high 17 points. And on the other side, uh, DK and Steins have kind of taken over the offense for Loyola as they both have 13. DK has not missed a shot tonight. He's four for four from the field. And yeah, for the Gators, Tyree Samuel certainly has been a guy to follow as he transferred in from Seton Hall. Today, he's only three rebounds away from a double-double in his Gators debut, 15 points. He's got seven rebounds. Yeah, he's been very impressive. At 6'10", I mean, you're kind of expected to be grabbing a lot of those boards on the inside, and he's done just that with seven, as you said, to go along with his 15 points. And then also, I want to touch on Han Lockton, who's six for six from the floor. He hasn't missed a shot either. Uh, he, two for two from the beyond the arc after shooting just 8%, as we said earlier, from, from three-point range last season. Uh, he's third in scoring with 14 for the Gators. Yeah, he's got a couple of those three balls. Only six today for the Gators in 15 attempts. That's good for a 52, check that, a 40% mark from beyond the arc. That's something that the Gators wanted to expand upon this year. Mentioned it before, they were among the worst in college basketball from beyond the arc a year ago. And also today, we haven't really talked much about Walter Clayton Jr. in this half. He has just been a guy that has facilitated this offense today a whole lot. Yeah, he's done a good job, at, and he's done his job, uh, which is to be the point guard for this offense. He, he's been all over the floor, really, but he, just ha he hasn't gotten too much of his own scoring. He has nine points, but he also has five uh, rebounds and five assists. Uh, the five assists leads the Gators. So he's, he's done his job at point guard, facilitating the offense and getting the ball to some of the guys to, to knock down some shots. After the first three games here, you might see Zion Pullen finally get his opportunity. He's currently suspended. The Gators' fifth year graduate transfer point guard suspended to start the year. So we can see a lot more like guys from Clayton Jr. and Aberdeen and they have shined tonight. Florida will inbound the ball from their own baseline as Clayton Jr. takes it out Passes it back out to Tyree Samuel. Three ball, top of the key, off the rim and out. Gathered in by Perry for Loyola. He's quick on his feet and back across the court. Perry with his pass out to David Brown the third over to Commander. It's now DK with it at the right wing. Hands it off to Commander again. He dribbles left in towards the paint. A floater from the, from the stripe is going to go down. It's a 77-60 lead now for the Gators. 7-21 to go in the ball game. Alex Condon with it in the paint for Florida. He turns around double teamed and he gets it down. Now 79-60 Gators, 7-10 to go. A three ball quickly here from Steins. No good for Loyola, but the offensive rebound after it's poked away, Perry gathers it in. Out to Brown the third, all alone on the right side. Now with someone to guard him, hand it off to Steins. Commander will go for three from the left wing and two strong with it. Picked up by Florida, Kugel on the rebound. He takes it up the far side of the court and dribbles back across. It is Condon who sets the screen. Now a pull-up jumper, got it! 15 feet on the shot. Kugel sends it down for two, 81-60. Gators have the lead and 6.37 to go. Perry with a walking dribble up the court here as he tries to slow the game down for the Greyhounds. Hands it off to Commander. Over now to Steins, a floater from the left side. A left elbow is no good off the right side of the rim, picked up by Florida. Kugel's got it on the right side as he flies into the ring and he gets it down. Around from the left side there, Riley Kugel is alive in Gainesville tonight. 83-60 the score, 6-0, to go. It is DK with it now for Loyola as Commander with the pass here on the left side, he gets the layup from the left block. 83-62 now, Gators, 5.56 to go. Clayton Jr. for Florida. Now Condon at the logo, out to Kugel. Gators recycling the ball. Tyree Samuel all alone there, just behind the stripe. Can't knock it down. Tipped in the air, back up to Samuel on the rebound. Bounce pass Condon, and he is fouled by DK. Oh man, Alex Condon tried for the shot from the left block, and DK smashed him down to the ground. 
Yeah, DK, I think he got a hand in his face there uh, of Condon. It, it looked like uh, as Condon fell to the ground, he grabbed his face. So hopefully he's all right. It looks to be all right as he steps to the free throw line. But it's been a very physical game on both ends of the floor uh, tonight between uh, the Gators and the Greyhounds. So Condon will get on the stripe here. Florida on a 6-0 run over the last minute. They've made each of their last three shots and seven of their last nine. First time Condon's on the stripe tonight. Freshman out of Australia. Sinks the first one. 84-62 Gators, 5.39 to go in this game. A couple of subs now as Alonzo Fowry right back on the court. Steins, Brown the third, and DK are off for Loyola. Chris Kuzemka's back out there. As is Milo Zilic, Serbian. Condon misses the second one, nearly rebounded there by Samuel, but Loyola gathers it in. Kuzemka with it, a cross-court pass to Perry on the left side. Perry, a three ball, can't get it, goes off the rim, and there's Clayton Jr. to gather it in for Florida. Bounce pass up to Kugel, hurrying it up. He will sling it in towards the paint, it is kicked away, and Loyola's got it. Perry with another three ball attempt, and he sinks this one from the left wing. Nice job there, Dion Perry, 84-65, Gators lead, 5-10 to go. Condon with it on the left side, right side rather, as Tyree Samuel receives the pass, spins in towards the paint, and draws the foul after attempting the shot. I believe that one's going to go against foul ray for Loyola. Yeah, strong take to the basket there from Tyree Samuel. He's been one of the big bright spots tonight so far for the Gators. Also, what about how about Riley Kugel? Just been all over the floor tonight, offense, defense, leads the team, leads the game with 21 points. Uh, he, he's just been phenomenal tonight. Yes, we have seen a lot more from him in this second half as Samuel misses his first free throw. He's now five for nine from the stripe tonight. He will take his second attempt here as everyone prepares to crash in. 5.05 to go in the game. The shot. No good off the back of the iron and tipped out of bounds, I believe. That was on Loyola. And it will be Gator basketball. I think that was Illich who tipped it out of bounds. Yeah, it looked like the, the referee was tr uh, the, on the baseline was trying to get some help with the other ref, but he got no help, but he still called a Gator ball. Clayton Jr. inbounding it for Florida as he sends this one a high pass all the way across the court. So Riley Kugel will start it up from the logo. Kugel now dribbling in, hooks it back out to Hauk. Hauk to Clayton, Richard now with it on the right wing. Hauk sets the screen, now receives the pass, driving into the paint, and a couple of hits off the rim. His shot no good. Picked it by Illich for Loyola. Perry takes it up the right side of the court. Perry, who made the three a couple of minutes ago, sends it out to Illich. Back out to Perry. There is Valre. Valre over to Kuzemka on the right wing. As they continue to sling it out. Perry for three again. No good. It is just short off the front of the rim. Picked up by Florida. Quickly they recycle it. Kugel with it on the left side. There is Hand Logden on the logo. Back out to Richard. Double teamed. Richard in towards the paint. Hand Logden. There it is. How about that for the North Carolina native? Hand Logden. 86 65. Four minutes to go in the game. Dion Perry. Back out with it, now Loyola in towards the paint at the baseline. There was Illich, and it looks like he draws the foul. He was double teamed, tried to contend there at the baseline, and he draws the foul. It was on Thomas Houck again. Yeah, he's had a few fouls in the second half, but what a job by, by uh, Handlocked in it and this Gators offense on that last possession getting the ball inside, and Richard was double teamed after he after he uh, worked off a screen, and he found the pass inside to Han Logden, who slammed it home. Han Logden now with 14 points in his Gators debut, six for six from the field tonight. We'll take a timeout here. Four minutes to go in the ball game. Gators in control, 86-65. They have the lead over Loyola, Maryland. You're listening to Gators basketball on the Orange of Blue Sports Network. It's Ruth Rusey. And this is how I live United. I read to children as part of United Way's education program. It helps them create links between language and literacy and prepares them for a better academic future. I figure I have the time and they have the need. My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. 
Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Every three little kids is going to develop diabetes in their lifetime. That is going to lead to heart problems, strokes, and even blindness. I'm John Sally, and I'm telling you, it ain't got to be that way. Now, you can up your defenses by eating more fruits and vegetables, having more vegetarian and vegan meals. These steps can be the power plays to protect you and your family against the risk of diabetes. To learn more, go to blockdiabetes.org. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key. You can be Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network here from the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. 86-65, Gators have the lead here. Four minutes to go here on opening day. Gators haven't lost here in their home opener in 40 years, and I don't think that streak is going to come to an end tonight, Hugh Green. Yeah, I don't think so either. And, and as you said earlier, they, they schedule a little easier opponents most of the time uh, for the first game in the home opener. But it, it's been a strong showing tonight from Todd Golden's uh, second-year team, and, and it, it, they've done a good job tonight kind of putting away a lesser opponent in, in Loyola, Maryland. Milos Illich on the free throw line for Loyola missed his first shot. The second one on the way, and it's down. Now 86-66. Gators up by 20 as Walter Clayton Jr. takes it up for the Gators. He sends it out to Thomas Houck, dribbling in from the right side in the paint here, gets it off the rim, tipped by hand, logged in. It doesn't go down, rebounded by DK for Loyola. Perry to take it up now, gets around Clayton, and Clayton pokes it out of his hands. It goes out of bounds. Loyola basketball, but nice defense there by Clayton. Yeah, Clayton's been all over the, the hands of, of uh, Perry and Steins tonight, the, the point guards for Loyola, uh, getting, getting in the passing lanes and stripping the balls away. Inbounded, Perry with it now, bounce pass to DK, right wing. DK circles it back out to Perry, double teamed. Two dribbles to the right side, now aiming in, slings it back out to the left corner for Illich, who drops it. He was all alone with that three ball, potentially doesn't get it. Now in towards DK, guarded by Han Logan. DK driving in towards the paint, bouncing it in front from the low post, has the shot. Nice layup there by Golden DK. 86-68 Gators, 3.13 to go in the game. Now Clayton Jr. with it for the Gators. Han Logden dribbling in from the right side as Clayton Jr. circles it back out as he travels right. There's a shot from just in front of the free throw line and it goes off and deflected out of bounds. It'll be Loyola basketball. Gators contend that it was theirs though. Yeah, I think it might have been off of Hauk. He was trying to say that it was off of Illich, but uh, Hauk definitely touched that ball last, and it was a good call by the official. Inside three minutes to go, Perry with it at the logo for the Greyhounds. He's toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clayton Jr., dribbling left. The out goes to Commander, and now the pass intended for DK is tipped out of bounds. I believe that one was on head logged in. It is Loyola basketball. They will inbound it from behind the baseline there. Perry will have it. Yeah, DK has some... Very impressive post uh, post moves, spin, spins and hook shots and stuff to, to get himself in the inside. And a five second inbound violation on Loyola, so it'll be Florida basketball just like that. Yeah, the 5'8 Perry trying to inbound the ball on the baseline is, is hard to do. Now Clayton Jr. with it at the logo for Florida, going left to right, he dribbles to the left side of the court, all alone with it. it Gets around Perry with a shot, deflected down. DK tried to rebound it, and now a foul called here. That is going to go. And now some words being exchanged here on the court. I believe that was against Illich of Loyola. That'll be his fifth foul of the game. Illich is going to be going to have to sit out the rest of this game as he's now fouled out. 86-68 the score. Gators lead. 2:35 to go here in the second half. Gators looking to close out their opening day strong here in front of several thousand fans that have gathered into the Stephen C. O'Connell Center tonight. The student section has been popping. The alumni section, not so much. <laughs> yeah, and then that, that student section, the Rowdy Reptiles, are counting the steps left, right, left, right as Illich goes to sit down for the rest of this game as he gets fouled out. So in to replace him here will be David Brown the third for Loyola. So after that foul, I think it'll be Will Richard on the line. Perhaps not. 
Now it'll be Clayton instead. This will be a one and one here. It's just their ninth team foul of the half. First shot here will go out. Nearly drained that one in. And is this one taken up by Loyola? Perry with it on the left side, getting around Will Richard. And he tried to pounce it back out to DK, and it's deflected away. Thomas Houck with it all alone, and he finishes it on the right side. Houck, how about that? The 6'9 freshman getting it done. 88 68, 2 12 to go in the game. Now Tyson Commander, a three ball. There it is. Promoted to general. That was a nice shot there on the three ball. It's 88 71 now. Two minutes to go in this ball game. As it is Riley Kugel fighting his way into the paint for the layup on the right side. Now 90 points. The Gators have crossed that threshold. 150 to go here. Perry with it at the key for Loyola. Back out to Steins, dribbling left. Defended there by Kugel. It goes on the right wing for Brown the third. Now back out to Perry and a foul called here. I believe it is on Walter Clayton Jr. of Florida. And with that foul, uh, the Gators are going to empty their bench a little bit. Looks like uh, Kubliskis is going to come into the first time, for, for the first time tonight, the freshman from Lithuania. Caius Kubliskis is here. Richard and Logden and Clayton, as well as Kugel coming off. So here we go. Where's Alex Klatsky at? <laughs> I think that's the guy that this student section wants to see. I'm surprised we haven't heard the chance yet. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they want to see Klatsky, uh, maybe Jack May, and also Ben and Anderson that we talked about earlier. It'll be a free throw here for Dion Perry of Loyola. So he hits it off the left rim and out. Picked up by DK, Loyola basketball. As they continue to shuffle it around. Perry on the left wing with it, trying to get around. As he gets this shot off, no good. Picked up there by Hauk. Julian Rishwain now on the court for the Gators as well. DK was called uh, for a off the ball foul there. And now as the Gators are in the double bonus, uh, Hauk will shoot two free throws from the line. Minute 29 to go in the ball game. 90-71 the score. Gators out in front. Have a look ahead to Virginia at the end of this week, November 10th. As the first shot here from Hauk goes off the back of the rim and out. And looks like we get some subs here for Loyola. Samuel Gibbs is on, as well as Jordan Stimke. Chris Kuzemka is back on the court now as well as Charlie Weisberg for the first time tonight. So now inside a couple minutes to go, we're going to start seeing all the bench guys. One more foul shot here for Hauk. He takes it, and it goes down. 91-71, Gators clear by 20. And it'll be Gibbs to take it up for Loyola. He dribbles to the left side, hands it off to Kuzemka. Facilitates that one out. It is DK with it at the left elbow, looking for help. Finds Gibbs, Gibbs back out to Stimke, over to DK, guarded well by Condon. He tries to fight into the paint and he falls down. Foul called on Condon, he can't believe it. And yeah, neither can this crowd. The ref called a trip on Condon, but it looked like uh, DK kind of got caught in his own feet there and fell over. Didn't really look like uh, Condon was the one to knock him over, but DK will go to the line to shoot a one and one. One minute, seven seconds to go in this game. A 91-71 advantage for the Florida Gators as Golden DK will get on the stripe yet again here. Five for six tonight. Now make it seven or six for seven as he drains the first one. Bank that one in. You don't see that very often on a free throw off the backboard. That's true. Lines it up for his second shot. Here it is. And that one, a couple of bounces, but it tips out. 91-72, Gators here as the play is whistled dead there at the baseline. Jump ball is called. Uh, the jump ball with the possession arrow facing Loyola, so they'll get the, they'll retain possession here. It'll be Gibbs to inbound it from the baseline. Loyola's own basket. Minute five to go in the game. As everyone circles around, green and white jerseys. Picked up there by Faure. Goes out to Stimke, dribbling to the right side, over to Gibbs. Valray with it, dribbling left now. Everyone beyond the arc. Kuzemka 
Bounce pass out to Charlie Weisberg, who takes a shot. Floater 15-footer, no good, too strong. 47 seconds to go and counting down as Richwain takes it up for the Gators. Charlie okay, that Condon with it. Goes back out to Richwain on the right side, dishes it out to the Lithuanian, and this one too strong there on the attempted layup. Dubliska's trying to get into the action here. 34.4 seconds to go in this game. A 91-72 Gators lead. A foul called. And it'll be Kaius Gubliskas on the line. Uh, trying to get his first points of his collegiate career here. Uh, the freshman out of Lithuania. Uh, the U-20 national team in his home country. And there is his first points. He drains the free throw shot. Most known for his uh, passing ability. He led his team in assists in both the U-20 and U-18 Euro Championships for Lithuania. And he's got his first two points as he gets his second free throw down. Under 33 seconds to go, 93-72 Gators. With it now is Samuel Gibbs for Loyola. Dribbling left, guarded well. Hands it off here to Stimke. Stimke with it at the top of the key. Sends a pass out to Faure, who's in the paint. Guarded well by Condon. Back out to Kuzemka. Bounce pass in towards Fowry, and he throws it off the rim. It bounces back out to Stimke. Still with it, shot clock at three. He gets the layup out, no good, and the foul called again. Seven seconds to go in this game, now 6.4 to be exact, but it looks like Florida got another foul called against them. Yeah, Aberdeen that time, shot clock winding down. Stimke driving it inside, trying to get a shot up, and he'll look for his first points uh, of the year and of his career as he's also a freshman. Well, Stimke will miss the first one. It bounces off the right rim and out. Just a couple of seconds left to tick away. As the Gators tie the bow on their first victory of the 23-24 season. Second free throw goes down, 93-73. Gators inbound it. Denzel Laberdeen with a walking dribble as the final seconds tick away. And that will do it tonight. The Gators get the dub, they get the job done. 93-73, the final score. The Gators take down Loyola, Maryland to open up their brand new season, their second under Todd Golden. We'll step aside here, get you our thoughts on this action we saw tonight. You're listening to Gator Basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Welcome back to Science Today. And we already have our next caller. Welcome. Who's this? Hi, I'm Philip. Hello, Philip. You sound really young. <laughs> Not really. I'm nine. Oh, wow. You're still in elementary school, right? Does that matter? Oh, no. Not at all. What's your question? Well, I know the molecular formula for water is H2O. I also know that hydrocarbon is CH3, CH2, 50, CH3. Glucose is C6H12O6. The general formula for an alkene is CnH2n plus 2. But what I can't seem to find is any scientific formula for Bob. Bob? My goldfish. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, go to mypyramid.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn up on the beach. But what held the boys' eyes in awful trance were the figures, the eaters of men, cannibals. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move. In that very instant, he heard a crashing in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing through the jungle. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, thinking only of his canoe. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Sperry. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Back here on the Orange and Blue Sports Network, Ethan Iben, Hugh Green with you from the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. The Gators with a 93-73 victory tonight to open up their brand new season against the Loyola Maryland Greyhounds. Hugh, your thoughts on tonight? 
it was a great performance all around from the Gators from start to finish. I mean, they started with a 16-0 run to begin the game in the first six minutes or so. And after that, uh, the defense kind of kind of slowed down a little bit and allowed Loyola to get back into the game. The lead was cut down to as little as 10 at one point in that first half, but they, the Gators pulled away in the second half with a couple of fantastic players on the offensive and defensive end for the Gators. Gators have not lost their home opener here in 40 years. That streak extended tonight. Top scorer is Riley Kugel with 23 points, the returning sophomore, and as well as Micah Hen Logden in his Gators debut, the Marshall transfer, 16 points as well. Tyree Samuel with 15. We're joined now by Nick Diaz, one of my usual Orange and Blue Sports Network commentators, but tonight covering the game for ESPN Gainesville. Nick, what are your thoughts on tonight? Thank you, Ethan, for having me. I'll tell you what, I love the way Florida pushed the ball in this one. Their pace was excellent, and their defense was great. Riley Kugo had a number of steals in this game, and that's going to be a key for the Gators as the season progresses. Felt like Riley Kugel really had a strong second half there for the Gators. Took him a little bit to get going, but once he did, man, it was fun to watch. I'll tell you what, he needs to be the main man for Florida as the season progresses as they move on to Virginia in just a couple days. Now, what did you think about uh, the 7-1 Micah hand Logden in his first season? We have no Colin Castleton to watch anymore, so he's got to be the guy. I think he's filling the role quite well. I really like the production from the Gator big men as a whole rather than just hand, hand looking. Um, but they're going to need a lot of uh, production from the bench, a lot of big men getting them involved. I really like Tyrese Samuel, how he played today. And, you know, this looks like a great Gator basketball team as opposed to last year. Well, definitely. And also Alex Condon tonight filling that center role particularly well. What do you think here? Yeah, Condon did a great job uh, coming off the bench, knocking down a couple threes early. That kind of drew, drew the defenders out towards him on uh, beyond the three-point line, and he was able to get get it going on the inside in the second half, uh, drawing a couple fouls. He was a, he was five for eight from the field total. Uh, he scored 13 points, which is fourth on this Gators offense. But as you said, Riley, uh, Mike Handlogton and Tyree Samuel, the other two big men for this team, uh, they all did a great job tonight. I felt like that defensive presence that you wanted to see really was there tonight, and that led to a lot of points in transition. Yes, the Gators' defense looked elite, and they strived in transi transition in this game. I'm not sure the exact number of points, but the Gators really led the team down the stretch here, just kind of getting points off offense, off defensive rebounds, off steals, and kind of blowing the game open late there in the second half. Now, points off turnovers, 21-12 to 12 in favor of the Gators. This is one of the many stats that goes in their line tonight. 58% from the field for Florida, just 46 for the Greyhounds. Tonight, from beyond the arc, 15 shots uh, gone in from beyond the arc for Florida out of 30 attempts, even 50%, and 10 of 15 for Loyola. Yeah, the, the Gators team, we talked about it earlier today, that they needed to shoot the ball a lot better uh, this season coming in coming into golden second season they did just that uh, today they shot 58 percent from the floor that, as opposed to the 43.6 percent they shot last season and as you said uh, they were good on the three-point line as well they shot just 31 percent last year from beyond the arc so the shooting was a big plus and also we talked about rebounds needed to be a big plus as well they they out rebounded the greyhounds 39 to 29 total so that, that was a big help and allowed them to get this 20 point victory. Haven't mentioned Walter Clayton Jr. yet today. He was one of the guys mainly who was running that offense. He was really facilitating well. What were your thoughts on him? Yeah, he definitely looked like that floor general that Florida needs nine points, five assists. He really looked great getting everybody involved and he just looked great out there. Any final thoughts before we sign off tonight from either of you two? Uh, that's about it. I mean, the Gators just did a great job doing what they needed to do, taking care of a lesser opponent, and now they're going to look forward to a, a tough, a much tougher matchup in their next game at the end of the week. Yeah, looking ahead for Loyola, Maryland, they will go and face Brown University on Saturday, November 11th. For the Gators, they will be back in action Friday, 7 p.m. against the Virginia Cavaliers, that game in Charlotte, North Carolina. For the first time after this, we will see them at home on November 14th, next Tuesday, against the Florida A&M Rattlers. That'll be a 7 o'clock tip here from the O-Dome. 
On behalf of everybody involved with this broadcast on the Orange and Blue Sports Network, a 93-73 final score tonight in the Gators' opening game of this season. Gators get the dub, and all is well in Gainesville. Shelby Hickman, our producer, Hugh Green, Nick Diaz, and my name's Ethan Ibe. So long from Gainesville. Thanks for tuning in to the Orange and Blue Sports Network's coverage. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at OBSN Gators. That's OBSN Gators. Until next time, go Gators.